perspective. So, Professor, can you start? Thank you very much for the invitation to speak to you. Can everyone hear me? Hello, can people hear me? Yes, we can hear you. You can proceed. Okay, thank you. So I'm going to talk to you today about the AI for K-12 initiative and our work developing national guidelines for teaching AI in K-12. You might ask, why should children be learning about AI at all? And as we know, AI is powering the next industrial revolution. There are going to be huge economic and social changes brought about by AI technology, and we need informed citizens who will be able to deal with these changes. The second reason is that children today are growing up surrounded by AI, things like uh, intelligent assistance, self-driving cars. So we don't want them to regard AI as magic. It's important that they understand how the technology works. And the third reason is that there will be many AI-enabled careers. And so we want children to begin thinking at an early age about how they might find a, find a career related to AI. The AI for K-12 initiative was created as a joint project of AAAI, the Association for the Advancement of Artificial Intelligence, and CSTA, the Computer Science Teachers Association. We have funding from the National Science Foundation and from Carnegie Mellon University. We have a threefold mission. Our first mission is to develop national guidelines for teaching AI in K-12. And these are modeled after the computing education standards that were produced by the Computer Science Teachers Association. So their standards consider four grade bands, K to two, three to five, six to eight, and nine to 12. We're doing the same thing. We want to define what students should know about AI and what they should be able to do with it. So that's the first component of our mission. The second is to develop a curated resource directory for K-12 teachers so that they can find materials on AI that are appropriate for young children. This includes things like online demos, software videos, curriculum materials, activity descriptions, um, anything related to AI, but restricted to things that are suitable to the K-12 grade bands. So there's a lot of university level material on AI, but most of that material is not accessible to K-12 students. And our, our third mission component is to foster a community of developers of new resources for teaching AI in K-12. So it's a mixture of people who are doing AI education AI research and people who uh, want to develop software resources and curriculum resources for teaching AI. We have a steering committee. I'm the chair. The co-chair is Christina Gardner McCune from the University of Florida. Fred Martin from the University of Massachusetts Lowell is now an emeritus member and he's a uh, former chairman of the board of directors of the Computer Science Teachers Association. And Deborah Seahorn, uh, formerly was the co-chair of the CSTA Standards Committee that produced the CSTA computing standards that are now widely adopted in the U.S. for K-12 computing education. In working on these uh, guidelines for teaching AI, we formed a working group with uh, K-12 teachers who are all uh, experienced teachers in uh, specific grade bands. So we have working groups for grades K to two, three to five, six to eight, and nine to 12. And these teachers are either in the classroom now teaching in these grade bands, or uh, they have many years of experience and are now uh, moving on to other, other kinds of work, such as uh, training other teachers or doing curriculum development. So we worked with these teachers for two years to develop these guidelines that I'm going to describe to you. One of the first things we did was put together a list of five big ideas in AI. And uh, you can see the graphic here uh, that describes the big ideas. These, these act as the organizing framework for the guidelines. And this was inspired by the computing guidelines 
uh, we talked about a list of five big ideas in computing. So we wanted to follow the same model. And I'm just gonna briefly go through with you what the five big ideas in AI are. The first idea is perception, that computers perceive the world using sensors. And you see in the figure here, how a self-driving car might uh, look at the world. It's detecting humans, it's detecting vehicles, traffic signs, and so on. The second big idea is that agents maintain representations of the world and use them for reasoning. So this covers um, representation and reasoning is a combination of algorithms and data structures would be the computer science terminology. Uh, the illustration here is from a famous uh, Go competition between uh, DeepMind's AlphaGo and Lee Sedol, the famous Korean Go champion. Big idea number three, learning, is that computers can learn from data. Some people think that machine learning and artificial intelligence are the same thing. That's not true. Uh, machine learning is an important part of artificial intelligence, but there are other topics uh, besides machine learning that make up artificial intelligence. Big idea four, natural interaction, says that intelligent agents require many kinds of knowledge to interact naturally with humans. Now, this is a broad category. It includes things like natural language understanding, common sense reasoning, affective computing, which has to do with reasoning about the emotional states of people and responding to their emotional states, and even gets at some topics like the nature of consciousness and the philosophy of mind. Big idea number five is also very broad. Uh, it's it says that artificial intelligence can impact society in both positive and negative ways. And it's important, we feel it's important for students to understand that uh, there can be negative impacts of AI and that uh, in the design of AI systems, people need to take into consideration not just who will be helped by these systems, but who might be harmed by them. So there are three divisions of the societal impact big idea. One of them is the ethics of AI making decisions about people. So it's very important when we allow a machine to make decisions about people, such as who gets a loan, who gets admitted to college, um, who gets uh, a credit card. Uh, it's important that those decisions be fair and unbiased. And it's important that the decision-making system be transparent so that people can understand why the machine reached the conclusion that it did. So. There are ethical issues involved in making decisions about people, um, and there are some hard technical problems involved in, in making sure that machines are fair and understandable. The second aspect of societal impact is the economic impacts of AI. So we know that AI can lead to increased productivity, new types of services, new career opportunities, but we also know that some people will lose their jobs because of AI. So for, for example, self-driving cars are a wonderful thing uh, if someone is disabled or too old to drive, but they're not so good if someone makes their living driving a taxi, say, and might be put out of work. So it's important to consider the both positive and the negative impacts when we look at how AI will affect the economy. And then the third, aspect of societal impact is AI and culture. So young children now are growing up living with intelligent assistants, things like Siri and Alexa. And in the not too distant future, they'll be living with robot companions. Adults will be working alongside robots and intelligent agents. And this becomes part of the culture. And so uh, it raises new kinds of cultural questions. For example, if you have a self-driving car, at what age is it appropriate to allow a child to travel in a self-driving car unaccompanied? There's actually a whole new genre of YouTube videos uh, of self-driving car mishaps or people falling asleep in their self-driving car, which is not completely self-driving, so they're not supposed to be sleeping, and yet, yet that does happen. There are people who are uh, daring the self-driving car. They'll step out in front of a self-driving car to see if it stops or not. So none of this stuff was, uh, was conceivable 
10 years ago and, and, and now it's becoming part of the culture and, and it's going to affect it's going to affect our culture and our society. So having defined these five big ideas, we put together a poster to explain these big ideas. This is um, intended to go up in the classroom, um, but we've also uh, used this to help educate adults about artificial intelligence. The poster is available for free at uh, ai for k12.org. And uh, these these ideas really took off. They've been they've been widely adopted now, and people have translated the poster into several other languages, including Korean, as you can see here. So the five big ideas were just the beginning of these guidelines that we need to define. the uh, The next step is to actually draft the guidelines, and this is what that process looks like. So we started out with a concept list. Um, so for each of the five big ideas, what are the important concepts? And then we had these working groups, uh, four working groups for the four grade bands. And these were uh, partnerships between the, the K-12 teachers and some AI experts uh, who are also part of the working group. And these working groups develop concept treatments that are, were appropriate to their grade band. So for a given concept, what could a student understand about this, say, in K2 or in 3.5 or in 6.8 or in 9.12? We had to take these concept treatments then and put them together into a unified whole. So we, we put them into a spreadsheet, and then the grade bands and the steering committee worked to uh, try and reconcile these, these concepts so that they were um, consistent across rows and across uh, columns. But that wasn't quite getting us where we needed to go. So the next step was to develop a synthesis to have a more coherent progression. And this was done, <coughs> excuse me, by the steering committee with input from the grade bands. Finally, um, a draft version of the guidelines for, for the, each big idea will be released to the public. And based on comments received, we make revisions. So we've already done this for Big Idea 1. Big Idea 1 deals with perception. Uh, we released a draft uh, grade band progression chart back in May. So you can see on this chart, the column headings are the grade bands, K to 2, 3 to 5, 6 to 8, and 9, 12. And the rows are various concepts. And so every cell is explaining how that concept would be covered in a particular grade band. So if we zoom in on this a little bit, you can see the beginning of the chart. We state the big idea. Big idea number one is perception. The uh, idea is that computers perceive the world using sensors. So that's the one sentence statement of the idea. And then we have these orange boxes where we're trying to, trying to get at the most essential concepts that we want the teacher to convey to the students. So for perception, one of them is the idea that perception is the extraction of meaning from sensory information using knowledge. So perception and sensing are not the same thing. Perception is extracting the meaning from the sensory signal. And then the second uh, big insight about perception is that there's a transformation from signal to meaning that takes place in stages with increasingly abstract features and higher level knowledge applied at each stage. And this applies both to uh, speech understanding and to computer vision. So after these orange boxes, we have the concept list. The three major concepts for perception are sensing, processing, and domain knowledge. Each of those is divided into sub-concepts, as you can see here. And then for each one of these sub-concepts, we give a treatment uh, in each of the four grade bands. So um, just to give a, an example, the very first subconcept is sensing in living things. And in K2, we ask students to identify human senses and sensory organs. So the LO, that's the learning objective, what students should be able to do. And the EU is the enduring understanding, what students should know. So in K2, the EU is just that people experience the world through their five senses, sight, hearing, touch, taste, and smell. When we get to 3.5, we're asking them to do a little more. We're asking them to compare human perception to animal perception. 
and the EU is that some animals experience the world differently than people do. Bats and dolphins use sonar, bees can see in the ultraviolet, rats don't have color vision, and so on. So this is just a quick uh, taste of what these uh, cells look like in the grade band progression chart. Big idea three is uh, learning, the idea that computers can learn from data. And uh, what you see here are uh, the four orange boxes for big idea three, the things that we want the teachers to get across to the students. And some of these uh, may only be uh, may only be appropriate for the upper level grade bands. But uh, the idea is that uh, machine learning allows a computer to acquire behaviors without explicitly programming those behaviors. That's the, the common definition of machine learning. But what we want people to understand is that what the learning algorithm is doing is changing the internal representations of a reasoning model. So you have a neural network or a decision tree that's doing some kind of reasoning, maybe classification, maybe prediction. And what the learning algorithm is doing is modifying the reasoner. So when a reasoner is capable of a large variety of behaviors, that's when a large amount of training data is required to narrow down the learning algorithm's choices about uh, what behavior we're trying to achieve. And there is this separation between the learning algorithm and the reasoning algorithm. So once the reasoner has been trained by the learning algorithm, then the reasoning algorithm can be applied to solve new problems and the learning algorithm is no longer necessary. So here's the concept list for uh, Big Idea 3. Uh, the major concepts are the nature of learning, neural networks, which we treat especially because they're such an important part of machine learning today, and then a consideration of data sets. So what's next for AI for K-12? Well, uh, we are uh, going to be releasing the Big Idea 3 progression chart for public comment very soon. The slide says October 2020, but that data slipped a little bit. So it'll be in uh, uh, very early November. Uh, then we'll be revising Big Idea number one. Uh, we've received public feedback on that. Uh, there is a um, plan to produce progression charts for Big Ideas four and five uh, in early 2021, and then finally Big Idea two. And in February 2021, there will be the Educational Advances in Artificial Intelligence Conference with a new special track on demo software tools and activities for teaching AI in K-12. So I, I invite you to join us in developing the guidelines or help grow the community of resource developers. Please visit us at our website, ai for k 12org and we do have a mailing list and you're welcome to join the mailing list. The, the link is on the slide here, but you can also uh, find the link if you just go to the ai for k 12org website. So thank you very much. And I look forward to the panel discussion.